Sometimes I wonder if I'm trying hard enough. I always ask this question to myself when I'm training, when I'm trying to make progress. And when progress sucks and things are slow, I just can't help but just think about like, what else can I do? I mean, what does it mean to try anyway, right? If you Google try, it says uh, Google's first, if you, the first thing that pops up is to make an attempt or make an effort to do something. So when I say, are you trying hard enough? I kind of hear it as, are you doing everything you can to make an attempt? Now that could mean a lift, it could mean a set, a rep, whatever. It could mean your programming. But kind of what I think about too is just my resources because to better phrase the, the statement is, are you using all your available resources to make a solid effort? You might argue that it's a matter of semantics, kind of like the verbiage and all the words that I'm using. But I think it's important what you say. It's important what you say. You know, I mean, what you say, because what you say is, is how you think it. What you what you say starts off as a thought. I, mean, I think that's that's really important to understand. And if and if you have garbage thoughts or you have sort of garbled garbled up thoughts, you're going to get uh, garbled up or garbage actions. So although I start off by asking, are you trying hard enough? I kind of thinking in my head is this is sort of what I'm thinking is what else can I do to make better progress and get better results? You've got to get ahead of your non-productive thoughts and learn to translate them to something that will guide you better. This is not the power of positive thinking because although affirmation is useful at times, your logical brain will know you're full of shit. This is why you must learn to communicate with yourself effectively. And this is kind of what I've been doing my entire life, trying to figure out my own thoughts. Your thoughts become your actions and inevitably you will become what you think about most. I know this sounds like some sort of Tony Robbins motivational speak, but consider for a moment yourself or maybe someone you know. Use it as, as an example. Um, someone that has a crappy attitude, maybe recently, it doesn't have to be like forever, but just at any moment in time, maybe for a week or whatever, they had something going on, right? They have some garbage in their head, stresses in life. It could be a family conflict, work conflict, personal conflict. These negative thoughts make that person act the way they do. A lot of the time, they're in denial, they're in denial with how it's affecting them negatively. It, it, everything translates. Like if you hate your job or you, you hate your boss or you hate your coworkers or you resent someone, it shows up in your actions and attitude and it eats away at you. For instance, in my situation, my hip is giving me problems and it really hurts to sit for more than 10 minutes. I'm writing this article, this video you're watching. I'm preparing a talk. The one that you're, you're watching right now, I'm a little distracted. T to top this all off, I'm not feeling that well. I just finished a crappy squat session and uh, I think I'm sick. I almost talked myself out of working out today because of, of a client that, that said that I, I sounded, asked me actually if I was sick. Uh, I had a raspy voice and I didn't realize. You might actually hear a little bit right now. I have a bunch of ladies actually also that decided to start an unscheduled flash mob dance class right behind me. The music is blaring past the volume of my headphones and a part of me wants to quit, stop and take a break from writing and, and making YouTube videos. But I really want to connect with you guys because my previous video connected with a lot of you had an unusually large amount of views in comparison to what I recently put out because it, it, it said something to you and people made a lot of positive comments. And it, it, felt, it finally felt good to figure out what people want from my channel but also what I enjoy creating. Presupposition. A presupposition is a thing tactfully assumed beforehand at the beginning of a line of argument or course of action. This could be written, this could be a written word, it could be a thought or it could be something that someone says. You're presuming something with what you say and what you think. By asking yourself or by me asking this question, am I trying hard enough, you're slightly presuming you're not. There's almost always a better way to communicate with yourself, to think. You may easily rephrase the question as, how can I try harder? It's already positive. It's already more positive. Though it's not better than asking, what can I do to get better and faster results? Just as I said earlier, when I write, work on YouTube videos, create content for my email list, I will ask myself, is it even worth it? This is already negative. It's making me want to quit. Uh, instead, I, I should ask, why do I want to keep doing this? 
presuppose your thought questions to help guide you towards your goals and dreams. I mean, this is, it's, it's simple, but I mean, it's such, it's such a small thing you'd think, but I mean, what you say and what you think affects what you do and it affects how you feel. And it's, they're like little small nudges. And over time they can really either bring you up or they can bring you down. I mean, if this is the first time you're hearing this concept about asking yourself questions or noticing what you ask yourself, or maybe you've heard it before, but you didn't quite connect with the idea. I've kind of felt the same way. I've, I've heard other people, I think it was Tony Robbins I listened to, or maybe I think I read it in a, I heard other people talk about this too from, from other self-development gurus. And I, it's, it's so much, so much of what you do is a habit. Like your thoughts are habits. They're routines. We get stuck on these thought routines and they're very hard to break. And when you're depressed or you're just feeling really low or you're just having a really hard time in your life, it's really hard to see the proverbial forest before the trees. If that analogy doesn't work for you, sometimes all you can see is the whole but not the entire donut. Then all you can do is make an effort to try your best. Turn your negative thoughts into questions. And, it, and if you ask yourself questions that presuppose something negative, you answer these negative questions with more questions. Be skeptical about your own negativity, right? I mean, negative people tend to be very skeptical. I don't necessarily necessarily say that's true, but you tend to be skeptical about what people can or can't do. You question everything. So if you're depressed or feeling down, why don't you just question yourself? Why are you feeling like crap, dude? What's the big deal? I mean, was that squat set really weak? Was it really that slow? Are you seriously that weak? It wasn't my best, but I know I can do better next set. This is what separates the amateur from the professional. And I want to share this mindset because I hear this on and off, depending on what podcast or book I'm listening to, that the professional, right? The best people, the best of the best, like they are great for a reason. They don't let what they're doing, what they don't let their past affect what they're doing. It's all that focus because when you're really focused, nothing else matters. When Tiger Woods or Michael Jordan, you know, a jump shot or a golf, golf swing, sure, they get pissed. But they don't let it piss them off too long and they shrug it off. And when they take the next shot, the previous shot, it's not even a consideration. When Dan Green tore his quad and hamstring, what did he do? You know, Dan Green, the best, one of the best powerlifters, you know, he, he did everything he could to keep going, to keep making progress, to not regress. Presuppose that you are, in fact, destined for something better, something greater. But it all starts with how you communicate, how you communicate with yourself. Control how you think by asking yourself questions that move you closer to your destination. Do I really want to skip this workout? If I skip this workout, like that's what I do sometimes too. Like when I'm lifting or I have a deadlift day or squat day, I'll say, I'll skip today, train tomorrow. It kind of throws off your whole week because it takes you longer. I mean, let's say I train on Sunday because that's when my training week starts typically is on a Sunday. And if I move on to Monday, it kind of messes up my whole week because I don't get a full seven days of recovery for that heavy lifting session. Control how you think by asking yourself these questions and and just re-reevaluate kind of what you're doing. Uh, you might not exactly know where you're going or what, but just understand that you're wanting to go to a better place and you want to become stronger and that's all we want to do. We want to enjoy the time that we're here in this world and we want to make ourselves better and we express it through the barbell. So become stronger. Thanks for listening. So I've dealt with depression and still struggle it with time to time. Um, there's no magic bullet. This is kind of what this essentially this video is really about it's about depression Uh, there's no magic pill there's no secret tactic just keep moving forward and embrace all the lows and the highs of life i mean that's really what it is i mean there's life is highs and lows there are no easy ways to put this there's no highs and lows um but you know i'm just sharing my thoughts sharing my experience click like if you haven't already subscribe to the deadlift nerd newsletter if you like to get emails from me directly if you like nutrition stuff you can subscribe to the ryansaplin.com newsletter again links are in the description have a great week comment below if you have a question or you want to share an experience and i'll see you guys on the next video